Hello and welcome to the Fun Zone. I'm Jason and this is the first in a new video series I shall dub Quick History. My goal is to shed light on historical figures and events that are seemingly forgotten and not taught about anymore. For the life of me, I cannot understand why this is so with so many of these historical figures. Which leads me to the first person on my list and a personal favorite of mine, William Wilberforce. Born on August 24th, 1759 in Hull, England. And we're gonna fast forward through his childhood. Now as a young man, William would inherit a sizable fortune from his grandfather and uncle after they passed. For a time, he would enjoy the social life of a wealthy young adult. Then he would go to university where he would meet William Pritt at St. John's College. Now, for those of you who don't know, Pritt would go on to become prime minister as well as longtime friend of Wilberforce. For it was he who would convince Wilberforce to finally seek and start a political career as a member of parliament in 1780. Now, for a time, Wilberforce would maintain his comfortable social life as well as his new duties. But before moving on, I would like to add, Wilberforce was well known among the social circles. He went to the theater, attended the balls, and he was frequently at gentlemen's gambling clubs. He was also known for his wit, his eloquent speech, as well as a wonderful singing voice. What can you say? The guy had charisma. Now let's get to the point. Why was William Wilberforce so important to history? The fact is, he was one of the most influential leaders pushing for the abolishment of the slave trade in the British Empire. Now, when he first began his political career, this seemingly wasn't of any importance to him. However, this would become the central goal throughout his career, spending nearly 20 years garnering support and introducing anti-slavery motions in Parliament. So, the big question is, what happened to him that altered his life so drastically? Well, based on Wilberforce's writings, after a few years in politics, he felt that he had contributed nothing to society, despite the influence that had been given to him. After this revelation, he grew very critical of himself and the political system he was part of, or politicking, as he would say. Thus would begin this self-examination on his morality, his impact on society, and last but not least, his religious convictions. As fate would have it, William would meet Thomas Clarkson, who would inspire him to take up and ultimately take down the slave trade through his political influence. Now, there is a lot of critical information I'm just gonna have to gloss over right here. There's not nearly enough time to cover all of that in one little video. So to get to the point with Wilberforce, he credited his moral objection to the slave trade directly to his Christian faith. After many years of small successes and many, many rejections trying to abolish the slave trade, Wilberforce would go on to write a book called Real Christianity, which made the argument against slavery from a strictly Christian perspective which at that point in time was a strong majority of people. In the end, Wilberforce had some major wins during his time in Parliament, such as the Slave Trade Act of 1807, which was a major stepping stone towards the abolishment of slavery. But it would not be until after Wilberforce resigned due to his poor health that the Slave Trade Act of 1833 would finally pass and be made into law. Now, for a bittersweet ending, Wilberforce would pass only three days after being assured that the act would pass in Parliament. However, I'd say that's a job well done. Well, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. And that's what I'd call some quick history.